Take and TalkPicks.com. This is episode 59 with Sarah Claxton. Sometimes I have plenty of time, but a lot of the time these days, it's like I don't have like five minutes. Hey, Photo World. Today's featured guest is Sarah Claxton. Sarah, are you ready to rock today? (laughs) Yes. Sarah is a photography agent with her company, Claxton Represents. She is based out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and represents commercial photographers and their work. After graduating from the Brooks Institute of Photography, she worked in many facets of the photography industry. Sarah has found a passion in working with other photographers and helping them achieve their vision. Sarah, welcome to Take and Talk Picks. Thanks. Well, I've shared a very brief overview about you and almost nothing about your business. Could you do us a favor and share with Photo World a little bit more? Sure. So I'm a photo agent, which means I represent photographers. I currently represent six photographers, um, and I help them market their work and sort of guide their careers day by day. And, uh, you know, I work with the business aspect of it, mainly I negotiate bids and do estimates and kind of handle client relationships so that they can focus on the creative. Very nice. And it's a really nice addition here that you focus on photographers and their business. And that's what we're all about is sharing the the business side of things. So we can focus on yours today. And just to get us started off with how things are working, do you have a quote or a mantra that you live by or run your business by? (laughs) Not really. Um, I... I like to tell people a lot that there is nothing new under the sun. Um, I think that we all get pretty hung up on having original ideas as artists. And it's nice to just remember that, you know, if you just do it, what's best for you uh, and not worry so much about what's been done, then you still have a unique voice. I I love knowing that and being reminded of it. I had an instructor when I was in school who told us everything you can think to do with photography was in some way done in the first 30 years of its creation. And it was kind of a nice reality check for us to realize, okay, we're not going to do anything that's going to be so mind-blowingly new, but we can make it our own. You know, we can always keep making it our own. Yeah, it takes a little bit of the pressure off. Right, right. Sarah, can you share with Photo World what sparked your interest in photography enough to pursue it as a career and build into this point being an agent for photographers? Let's see. I started shooting when I was 19 and um, was so I've always been involved in photography and uh, my degree, I started off in documentary and was really inspired by um, Lewis Hine and Mary Ellen Mark and Nan Golden and some, my, there's lots of documentary photographers that I was inspired by, but I, um, I then went on to commercial world and over the years, my passion for actually taking the pictures kind of dropped off and I started working as a photo editor and in production and on the business side of things. So really it's just kind of where my path has taken me very organically um, in that I have the the background and I understand what it is to be a photographer, but I don't have any desire to be that person anymore. And I love working with photographers and it's sort of what I know. <laughs> yeah. I don't really know what else I would do. Hey, I mean, there's so many photographers out there and some days I feel like I'm this way where I don't know enough about my business and what I'm doing. So, I mean, it'd be great to have an agent there. And there are agents out there for commercial work, uh, especially, but artists as well. And, um, you know, there are other facets where you can find agents to work with and help work with you to to build your business. But it's awesome mm-hmm. that you've made that your business and, and kind of uh, created this team where you can work with six photographers and, and see where they want to go because everybody wants to take a different direction. And I think it's really cool getting there. But when we're going in these different directions, we're building our businesses, whether we have help or not, there are good times and there are bad. Can you remember a time where in your business you failed or there was a learning moment that you came out better from in the end? Oh, so many. (laughs) Constantly. I mean, every day is a a new adventure. And, And I think anyone who owns a small business can relate to that. Um, there's so many, 
little things to stay on top of. Um, so as far as, you know, in the, on the photography and picture editing kind of side of things, um, I, I feel like, I don't know, I can't, I can't even pinpoint a specific like failure, um, you know, but whenever we lose a bid, there's always, I feel like there's a good opportunity for learning there. Um, and I, I need to be a good listener to my photographers. So, you know, I appreciate communication and feedback. So I guess there's all, I mean, there's always opportunities for growth. Could you recall a time when maybe the communication wasn't as clear as it should have been and uh, things didn't work out the way we all wanted? One of the first bids I ever did, I left a motor home off. It's like, you know, $1,400 wow. mistake. Um, I'll never, ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, we had, it was a location and we had talent. So we had to have a dressing room and we had to have, so you have a motor home and I totally forgot. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, and we fixed it before. Everything's fixable. Right. But, but that was, that's a good one. Well, depending on when you catch it and uh, the severity of the, the issue. <laughs> right. Not everything. Not everything is fixable. You can always apologize. <laughs> but, but yeah, that was a big one. So when you're working with um, artists and you have a daily communication with them, there's always something that kind of falls through the cracks and it's, it's always hard to, and especially when you're not in, in person, it's always hard to communicate properly your sort of desires in art and in photography. Um, you know, pe visual communication is, is very different. And I think a lot of us need to work on our, um, you know, the way we talk to people, <laughs> especially for photographers. I mean, we're a hundred percent visual people. That's all we do. Yeah. You know, it's how we yeah. learn. It's how we work. Uh, it's how we get paid, you know? <laughs> and yeah, it's a, it's a great skill to develop the, um, the act of verbal communication when you are a visual person because... develop, no pun intended. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I think it's... sorry, go ahead. Go... No, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to move along here um, to kind of figuring out what what's the most important practice to your business. What do you do every time either with a photographer, your interaction with them, or when you're placing a bid on their behalf? What is one thing that stands out very important in every interaction? My ultimate goal is always to be as honest and um, in my representation of the individual's work. Like, I want to, you know, I'm as a, as the representative, I want to be able to communicate their goals in, in a bid or, um, with the, with the person, with a potential client as best as possible. And I really have my guy's best interests at heart. Yeah. You're not out to you know, play any games with anybody, you're, you're here to help and you're, you're a service industry. Uh, and right. And playing middleman is always the tough part. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I try to stay grateful for all the opportunities and, um, honest. And I like to, uh, operate my business in a way that, you know, we're, we're fair and, um, we, you know, we cost what we cost and there's not a lot of, yeah, game playing. <laughs> right. So, so yeah, so we, so I think that's the best way to achieve our goals. I think uh, early photographers have a really poor misconception about how the industry works and they don't think that everything is really black and white. And when you get into it well enough into it, you start to realize that it is pretty much very black and white. If you're not that clear, then you're just playing games and you're going to lead people the wrong way. Your clients mm -hmm. aren't going to be happy. Exactly. So when we're talking about our businesses, whether it's you being an agent or photographers who might be listening, we do have a wide range of people out there and we have all different levels. Can you share with Photo World one thing you think would lead to growth and success in a business regardless of their current level? Get a marketing plan. You know, figure out, figure out your mission statement, what it is that you do best, 
and start doing it. There's, there's a lot of potential for procrastination. Um, and especially when you work in a creative field for yourself and by yourself, you know, hold your, hold yourself accountable. And, you know, you, you might be really talented and have the potential for great success, but nobody will know about you unless you show them your work. And so the most important thing in what we do is getting your work out there and in front of people. Marketing plan, and, get it out there, be in front yeah. of people. I, I love it. Like we, you're right. There's weapons of mass distraction out there mm -hmm. where you're editing <laughs> photos and you're one click away from Netflix. It's like, yeah, uh, what are you doing? You know, you got to be to work in there. And right. And in that way too, work with an editor. If you, if it's a friend or you can afford to hire someone, um, I'm on this great new site that's beta still, but it's called Review Me, and you know it's like fifty bucks to have me edit your portfolio. Um, I, you know, I do portfolio reviews. If you can afford to attend one, there's so many varying levels, and even if it's just get, I mean, any feedback you can get, get someone else's eyes on your work. Yeah, whether it's time or money, Photo World, if you can't afford to pursue some sort of feedback, you're not going to grow very fast. You're not going to grow very big. You need to realize that you're not the only person involved with your pictures because behind the camera, we see amazing things and we're so excited about it and we think we're doing great. But once you put it out on the other side into a print or online or in a magazine, wherever it ends up going, there's so many other people who are really supposed to be looking at it than you. So, I mean, yeah. if you're doing it just for you, that's a different realm. If you want to make a business out of it, you need to understand both sides. Right. And there are a lot of groups and communities and, that you can go to, like the Slide Luck Pot Show. Um, get, you know, just get critiques. Show your mom. Like, just show people because your opinion isn't necessarily what matters here. Exactly. Right on, right on. So, when we're talking about your career... Um, whether it was while you were in school, pursuing, doing some photography, getting interested in that, or when you were transitioning into becoming an agent for photographers, can you recall an aha moment, something that just clicked? And when you started changing things in that direction, there was just this immense growth, this huge realization, wow, this is what I need to do next. Yes. At many different points in my career, I think I've had those moments. Um, they usually involve learn, you know, just learning something new. I just did a workshop, um, a photo editing workshop called the Kalish, uh, in Rochester at RIT and a couple months ago. And it was pretty life changing because I, I was just listening to these really amazing picture editors who work in still and motion multimedia, um, kind of hearing about how they approach their work, it just it was an education. And I uh, realized that there was quite a bit more in terms of innovation that I could be doing for my business. And really since it, kind of understanding that, I've been able to spot the opportunities. That's awesome. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's never like a, you don't have revelations by yourself. Right. All the time. <laughs> no, exactly. And if you learn about, you know, these tools that exist, then you can understand how to use them. Education, no matter how about how you, you go about getting it, is always going to be some sort of value. And if you don't think you're going to learn something from, from a workshop, from a seminar, if you go into it thinking, hey, I'm not going to learn anything, you're going to be closed off to the things you could learn. But if you go into it thinking, hey, you know what? I'm going to open up and see what I can pull out of here, even if it's a little piece. You could know most of it in there, 90%, but there's going to be something in there you haven't heard before or you're going to click in a way you haven't heard it before. And you always need to grow being open to learning from others because we can't do it alone. Exactly. So can you share with Photo World a time when you heard the best advice and what was that advice for your business? <gasps> I don't know. I've had so much. I ask for advice a lot. Um, for okay, honestly, for business structure, like 
having a time put aside that you check email. Like you don't check email all day long. You check email from 10 to noon and respond. Um, that's great advice. That is such a great way to structure your day. Um, that's, that's fantastic business advice. There's so much though, like seriously, that's kind of overwhelming to think about. <laughs> well, I like that one, the, the tip about email, having a, a time set aside for it, just dedicated to that. So you're not overwhelmed thinking about it all day long. Oh, I got to get to this one. And now you're distracted from what you could have been really focusing on. Yeah. I, I really like those really small little pieces of, of, utilitarian advice like it's just do it <laughs> right. like break it down that's a that's a great way to start your day and then um you know uh, something i don't i yeah i'm forgetting there's there's a lot there really brain. is an endless wealth of advice out there but sarah yeah. i think you shared a really valuable one for photo world so that way they can now have a new system in place to go okay 11 a.m., I do emails, and then I revisit it at 4 p.m. before the end of the day. So that way they have their time for emails. Everything else can be put in the rest of the time that's available. Having those systems in place is huge. Yeah, and, you know, uh, another piece of advice is is just to um, be nice. <laughs> I hear that one a lot. Like, people forget that sometimes, and it's really easy to uh, react, but um, – I I think in in this service industry that we're all in, being nice is huge. Absolutely. You, it, will, it will get you far. It does take you places, for mm -hmm. sure. So do you have an app or an internet resource that you think Photo World could benefit from knowing about? Oh, I just learned about Atavist, hmm. a, a web publishing tool, um, A-T-A-V-I-S-T, atavist.com. It's, it's really... A, a beautiful publishing tool. So if you are a storyteller, a visual storyteller, you can use Atavis to um, publish your stories. Very nice. You can write or you can, you know, just do images or have someone else write. It's, it's really pretty easy to use. And um, there's also Stellar, Stellar, which is a new app. Similar to Instagram, but another kind of long, long form storytelling, like a little magazine version of Instagram. Very I've good. been playing with that. That's awesome. And Photo World, you know, you can find these two links to Atavis.com and the app Stellar on the show notes page for Sarah Claxton. Just type in Sarah in TakingTalkPics.com and her show notes will pop up with these resources, resources and links back to her. So, Sarah, you mentioned uh, one of my favorite photographers, a documentary photographer, Lewis Hine, and you mentioned a mm -hmm. few others. Do you have a couple of photographers that you were inspired by in the past or a few that you're looking at now that really inspire you? Yeah, again, there's for specific purposes. Um, yeah, I've always been a huge Nan Golden fan. I, um, I, I love Eleanor Carucci. She's a documentary Um and, uh, you know, all the, all the classics really, uh, but, um, I think that, you know, the reason I got into photography was Lewis Hines work. Very nice. Yeah. I mean, his, his project with, uh, child labor, I mean, that's mm -hmm. just really powerful stuff. And yeah, it's important to remember that, you know, Visual media can spur change sometimes a lot m more quickly and have greater influence than words. Yeah. Yeah. And that's People what we should be. be that's what we should be about at the end of the day is trying to make sure our pictures express something, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's for a wedding client and making them remember such an important day or it's a commercial client and trying to hit right on that, the, the nail of the head there with that perfect ad showing, hey, you want this, you need it. And they, sure. they make their sales, you know. It, it all... is, yeah, it's communication. Yeah, for sure. So We at, have to know what you're saying. As you're building your business and, and continuing with your photographers and, and your agency here, can you tell us about a recent or an upcoming project that you have in the works or had in the works that you're really excited about? Yeah, there's a couple. And um, I'm trying to remember what I'm allowed to talk about. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> um, we just did, I worked with a photographer, Kate, 
T. Parker. Um, and she's been working on a project called Strong is the New Pretty. So she has a, a book coming out in fall, in the fall, um, or 2017 even, uh, that she's been working on. But, but through that work, we've been able to access a lot of commercial clients. And um, because of her personal projects, we've been able to get the hired for her creative abilities and, and we've had so much creative freedom on these jobs. It's just um, kind of a dream come true for photographers. And there's just been a bunch of projects surrounding that that have been really fun and exciting to work on and just, you know, awesome, awesome clients who all kind of understand what we're about. It's a nice working environment for sure. Yeah, that's cool. I just saw you had a, a blog post about her recently. Um, and I was looking at her work and she's got some really cool stuff. So, uh, I think my next thing will be to reach out to your photographers you represent and get them on the show and talk about their businesses, you know? And yeah, they're all really great resources. Um, they've all, they come from very different backgrounds and they've just, they work harder than anyone else I know. That's awesome. And when we're going through our businesses and we're, we're developing into things like the aha moment, we have these different moments that stand out. Can you recall a time where you kind of had this feeling where it's like, hey, I made it, I'm, I'm doing it. And maybe it wasn't this end all be all top pinnacle moment, because if you did that and decided this is it, I made it, you'd just fail afterwards, right? So just one highlight in your career that really stands out. Um, I mean, in my whole career, I, I feel like there was a not actually involved in this. And I'll be honest, every time I pay my rent, I feel like I'm a success. So, <laughs> you know, if we take it day by day, but, um, I was involved in a media project through the international league of conservation photographers that I, I used to work with. Um, and I got to go to the Senate building when they signed legislation to protect the flathead reserve, um, in Montana and Canada. Cool. And that was kind of a cool moment for me. Um, you know, just because I got to see the result of our media campaigns and to actually like turn into legislation. Um, but you know, I also, I published a book with some friends in, in college as part of a documentary trip to Cuba and that felt huge to me then. So I, I think, you know, there's different points in our careers where we are always making it. And how about your recent status with uh, Brooks Institute? Oh, I'm um, vice president of the Alumni Association with Brooks. Boom. Uh, that's I just get myself involved in things. Um, so that's, you know, I love my alma mater and I hope to, you know, help other alumni kind of stay connected. And one thing that's great about going to photo school is everyone you graduate with goes on to, or hopefully goes on to work, you know, in the photo industry. And we all end up in these different fields and we hire each other all the time. They want to. My schools didn't do that, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, depends You're on trying. the school. Depends on the school. <laughs> yeah, it's a great network, though. It's great to be involved with. Yes, and you said I like to be involved with things, and I thought that was perfect. Such a great value to hear, and it's so simple, so easy, but it's true. We have to mm -hmm. be involved with things. If you're not, then nobody knows about you. You don't know about anything, and what's the point? You know. So, I, I think that's brilliant. Yeah, it's 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 important to stay involved and understand what's going on in your community. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of photographers listening, and many of them are kind of beginning photographers, just starting out. Do you have any advice for them of what they can do to kind of change things today if they weren't doing it already to kind of get in the right direction for their career? You know, the the actual working with an editor or, you know, a peer group that can review work, uh, that's, that's huge. Um, and other than that, you know, if if you didn't go to photo school and you're starting out on your own, there are so many more resources today available to you than there were even like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, online photo groups. There's ways to get your work out there and, and ways to be involved in communities. You don't actually have to physically be there. Um, 
so just getting involved and showing your peers your work is is a you know just constantly doing it you have to work really really hard to be successful in photography and um just doing it every day yeah i had on the show uh about a month and a half ago now, just a little episode about the book by Stephen Pressfield called Do the Work, really breaking mm -hmm. down how simple it is to say do the work, but how complex it is to actually do it every single day. But if you don't, you're not going to go anywhere. Yeah. I mean, it, if you want to be a photographer as a career, it's every day. Yeah. It's not as glamorous as it looks from the outside where it's like, oh, you get to take pictures for a living. It's like, no, I get to work hard for a living. And then sometimes I take pictures. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Be very intentional about the pictures you take and then also do your bookkeeping and yeah. also, you know, show your work and also <laughs> edit the work and get it out there. I mean, the 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 actual act of taking the picture, unfortunately, is Minimal. just a blip, yeah. <laughs> a blip in the process. It's one quick shutter release, that 125th of a second, and you move right on, you know? like Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, we're about to wrap it up here today on the show. And hey, Photo World, welcome to another great resource. I'm so glad you're here. Um, but before we go, Sarah, could you share with Photo World one parting piece of guidance and then the best way that we can reach you, whether it be your website or some sort of social media, and then we'll say goodbye. Um, guidance. Just um, remember that there is nothing new under the sun and you have a unique voice regardless. So use it uh, every day. And... Uh, the best way to reach me is my website um, or through my website. It's claxtonrepresents.com and I'm Claxton Reps on Instagram. Very nice. And again, Photo World. Oh, and Twitter. And we'll have all these things on the show notes page on takingtalkpics.com. If you can't find her for whatever reason directly, uh, we'll have all these links for, for social media and her website uh, and blog. But Sarah, I cannot thank you enough for your time today in sharing such great value. Photo World thanks you and happy shooting. Thank you, Rob. Hey, Photo World, if you were unable to attend last Wednesday's webinar, there's actually another one coming up on August 19th. Be sure to go to TakeAndTalkPics.com, hit the webinar tab, and sign up today. Photo World, are you looking for a way to make your images pop to that next level? Head to TakeAndTalkPics.com, go to the affiliates page, and from there, you will see Free Vault Photography Products. We have worked out a special deal with Free Vault Photography Products, so you can get 15% off your next purchase. Just enter Take and Talk 15. Spell it out, Take and Talk than the number 15. Takeandtalkpics.com. Thank you again for joining us today, and we really appreciate you stopping by. Make sure you share this with your friends and photo family out there. We'll see you next time. This is Rob Kruger. Happy shooting. <laughs>